Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. We've got a whirlwind of news, and I'm sure you're already wondering about that title there. Netanyahu declares President Trump as the President of the United States. Well, it's kind of an awkward way of wording, but he, but he does talk about Trump as the President in present tense, uh, both in English and and in Hebrew, you're going to hear that in just a moment. Uh, also, we're going to be covering, too, the Chinese peacekeepers in Lebanon. I think we got that coming here in America, right? The THAAD system, of course, being deployed over there in Israel uh, as, uh, as we speak right now. Crazy flooding going on in uh, River de Guerre in France. Uh, so just, just really nutty things there. And, of course, the United States has bombed. The Houthi rebels, the deep bunker busting high altitude bombers uh, have now targeted Yemen and those Houthi rebels down below in the bunkers there. Let's go right uh, away to the breaking story here that I wanted to cover for you guys here. Biden, and let's listen to what Biden has to say here at the beginning of this broadcast here as he talks about the THAAD system being deployed to Israel. This said to be the latest addition to Israel's arsenal courtesy of its top ally, the United States. Why did you decide to uh, get the permission for the fan to be deployed in Israel? Defend Israel. Have you any worries about it? That is made up of it. <laughs> well, to defend Israel, that was his response there. Uh, very, very powerful weapon system there. Another layer of deterrent uh, for Iran. But people forget, and Israel already knows, I've heard this from intel sources inside of Israel, they know that Iran has nuclear weapons uh, and very concerned that they will be launched on Tel Aviv uh, if any sort of high-level battle actually takes place there. Uh, now, moving on from there, let's go to the very breaking thing that really caught my attention here. Uh, this is President, uh, excuse me, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu with an American uh, uh, official as well. Is that that system is coming into place right there? American military officials there as well, uh, greeting them as they come into place. I'm letting this full clip play out because I want I want you to be able to see exactly for yourself, unedited, uncut. What Prime Minister Netanyahu will actually say here, and giving thanks to the United States for sending the THAAD system there, and I certainly pray for both American, Israeli, and all other Great, forces uh, in the region for American their safety. Soldiers, our friends uh, from the IDF, uh, can't think of a better example of the incredibly close and important cooperation between Israel and the United States. This is an outstanding example of how the uh, American Armed Forces uh, have made a commitment to Israel's safety and security. Uh, they've done this in many other ways, but I can't think of a, a better single example than what we're looking at right now. Uh, and it's a testament to the really unbreakable bond uh, between Israel and the United States at so many different levels, including, of course, most importantly, mutual uh, safety and security. Well, I, Here it comes. I, agree. I think this is a, a testament to the strength of the alliance between Israel and the United States. It's never been stronger and the uh, coalition for common defense that is expressed here not merely in uh, expressed intentions but in actual forces on the ground i think is uh, remarkable so uh, we're very very uh, happy with the uh, cooperation and with the american commitment often expressed by president trump to israel security uh, Often expressed by President Trump.
And again, he mentions President Trump in the Hebrew language there. Uh, I'm going to see if there is a way for this to do a translation for you guys. Uh, I don't. Oh, gosh, here we go. Closed captions. Maybe that'll do it. Ah, uh, yeah, let's let's try that there. I did not realize that, but let's try that. Uh, cooperation and with the American commitment often expressed by President Trump to Israel security. Any point in Chaylin, American, the Bitui Otsmati, and the Kesher, Ben Arzot Obeid and Israel, the Brit Azot, no longer no ita kulka chazaka, the whole of the world, but the first one is the Bitachon. And I'm very proud of the Mechuyavut, the American, the Mechuyavut that we did, and the Chizuk Kesher is even better. Now, now in Hebrew, he's far more clear, and that's what gets me right. You might. Take the English version because he says often President Trump's commitment to their security. Biden is not mentioned. Kamala Harris is not mentioned, right? But watch what he says here, right? As and I very much appreciate the American commitment as well as President Trump's commitment to strengthening this relationship. I mean, the man's already telling you who's going to be the next president of the United States, at least in his view, his mind there. And I'm going to tell you something that's terrifying to me. Because some people say that, well, at least it'll calm down the tensions with Russia and the United States, and it may. But when it comes to Israel going to war with Iran that is going to take place. This is why it's so close to the election when they'll do the attack. They want America to vote for Trump to become president. And believe me, I don't have any love for Kamala Harris either. I just listened to a video this morning of this real precious mother with her daughter who was constantly suffering in the hospital I shared it on my Twitter page here. I wish I'd have brought it up here. Maybe I will before the end of the broadcast there. And she tells how Kamala Harris had her arrested because her child missed more than 10 days of school. And this child, very sick, ended up, the child ended up having a stroke at the age of 10 years old. And as she said, don't dare vote for Kamala. Well, I wouldn't vote for either one of them, but, you know... <laughs> People will say, oh, what else choice do we have? Don't vote for either one of them then. When I go to the polls to vote, I have to keep these things myself in mind. Let's, let's continue on. I want to share with you this next one. First, let me go to Russia's, uh, uh, Russia's Reuters here, where Russia tells Israel not to even consider attacking Iranian nuclear facilities. That's what TASS has said. And, you know, they're already saying right now, as, you know, it, by the way, they did not want to put that video up. I had to actually change the title and change it back after I changed it originally. Because let's face it, that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're trying to bring about an Armageddon artificially. Did, did, did the Arabs attack Israel? Oh, everybody might say, well, Hamas attacked Israel. You mean to tell me a year later, Israel could not root Hamas out of uh, Gaza without carpet bombing the entire uh, city. That's all they did was just carpet bomb the entire strip. And there's a beautiful, beautiful uh, thing I saw the other day, too, on tw another thing on Twitter there. By the way, follow us, Israeli News Live on Twitter. My wife, Yana Satova, she uses her maiden name on Twitter there. Definitely follow her there. She did an interesting, very interesting post there with Dr. Uh, ben Marble. I think you'll find that very interesting. Uh, but this is... <sighs> definitely building up and and I am definitely working very hard on getting this book ready to get it out to you here in the next couple of months here I'm hoping we can get it done get it to print get it to you get it in your hands because you need to know prophetically what you're facing up against and how you've been lied to let's continue on this one is amazing thank you Brandon Taylor uh, for posting this up here Thomas Massey is the one, only one who will not sell his soul in America 
over to Israel. I want you to listen. He's talking to Tucker Carlson. I don't think Tucker Carlson will ever. He's absolutely crazy. I don't know if he likes this or not because, you know, listen, Trump and Carlson both are strong supporters of Israel, but watch what this man has to say just in this short clip there, Thomas Massey. God bless this man. Anybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are firmly embedded in APAC. And every member has someone like this? That's how it works on the Republican side. And when they come to D.C., you go have lunch with them. And they've got your cell number, and you have conversations with them. That's absolutely crazy. I've had four members of Congress say, I'll talk to my APAC person. And when it's clearly what we call them, my APEC guy. I'll talk to my APEC guy and see if I can get him to dial those ads back. Why have I never heard this before? Why would they want to tell their constituents that they've basically got a buddy system with somebody who's representing a foreign country? It doesn't benefit the congressman for people to know that, so they're not going to tell you that. Everybody but me has an APEC person. What like, does that mean, an APEC person? I can't believe for the life of me that Tucker doesn't already know this. I really can't. But maybe he doesn't. Let, let's give Tucker a little credit. Maybe he doesn't, but he knows now. My question is, what's he going to do with it? Trump's got an APAC person. It's obvious. Probably Netanyahu is his APAC person. Uh, if you, you know, all you got to do, if you want to know uh, APAC and who APAC is, just type it in. Just type it in and go there. See for yourself what APAC is. Uh, without the stupid stuff that pops up, here we go. That is APAC. Don't need to say any more. The control over our forces, sending our forces where they want them to be sent. Let's just face it. That's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, God bless Thomas Massey. I'd love to have Thomas Massey on the program. If you happen to know him in any way, we would gladly have Thomas Massey on. And if you're voting, he's in your district, vote for Thomas Massey. All right, an amazing, amazing guy. I don't think he's going to be able to stay in. They're going to make sure he comes out. They're not going to have one egg in there that they don't appreciate. But, oh, I did put that mother and daughter thing up there about Kamala. Let's go ahead. Let's play this. You need to hear this for yourself, a little bit of it. I intend to fight for Black Lives Matter. I intend to fight. If Black Lives Matter to her, why didn't I matter? Because of truancy, California public schools lose $1.4 billion a year in funding. I want money. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree what my Kamala Harris did to my mom. So I decided I was going to start prosecuting parents for truancy. And I spent a majority of my time here at the hospital. Uh, when Kamala Harris was the California Attorney General, she had me arrested and prosecuted because my handicapped daughter was sick in the hospital and had missed some days of school. I have sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a hereditary disease and it is very, very painful. <laughs> In 2012, like all California parents, I received a threatening letter from Kamala Harris saying, we'll go to jail for a year if our kids even miss 10% of school days. Little did I know, there was a warrant out for my arrest. All of a sudden, the police is outside my house and they this, started this banging is, on the door. They told me I was- This is absolutely horrendous. You know, you got one candidate that's going to round up everybody in school. And they said, go talk to Kamala Harris. And you've got another that's going to take you to war and destroy our nation through war. But my hell was just beginning. They gave me two charges. I spent the next two years in court fighting these charges. Kamala assigned her nastiest prosecutors to my case, my homicide prosecutors. 
my gang prosecutors. And they went over there and I said, when you go over there, look really mean. <laughs> All the time, I had to spend going to court. Listen, we know firsthand ourselves just how corrupt the judicial system is. And believe me, they even used <clears throat> the code language that they were taught in America. We have watched prosecutors use the same code language that Netanyahu used at the United Nations. Oh, believe me, if you are anti-crime anti of Israel, not anti-Israel, I'm not anti-Israel, not anti-Jewish. I mean, I come from Jewish parents. kind of hard to be anti-Jewish when you come from Jewish parents, right? But what's really fascinating, though, is if you are against the genocide of Palestinians, which I am, Oh, wow, guess what? They've got a code name for it. That's what Netanyahu said at the United Nations, Flat Earth Society. And so even the DA learns that same expression. Oh, he must be conspiracy theorist. Just call him the Flat Earther. Look, I'm not here to bash people who believe in Flat Earth. That's their choice. I'm not. But you'll real quick like get labeled that for the code language for the judicial system here in America. Find it's very fascinating to me to see these things, right? All right, let's take let's go a little bit further here. Israel shoots a pregnant woman in Gaza. I can't believe it, but yeah, uh, this is in 2009. By the uh, oh, wait, one shot, two, two, yeah. Or she says and she puts in her post here. Uh, I don't really know who this lady is. I just happened to run across her post. Uh, in 2009, they were wearing T-shirts saying one shot, two kills, target pregnant women to kill them and their child. She makes that a clear uh, message here. Uh, what a horrible, horrible thing. But it's the way it goes, right? Israeli army, right? So let me take, get rid of the spam that I get constantly. Let me find it again. My apologies here. Here she is. She's a pregnant woman. She's been shot. And just trying to rescue her is not easier because it's a sniper. This thing, this is what you're supporting. I know this from when I lived there in 2004 and uh, a good friend of mine, uh, he was, uh, his family were, I think from Yemen originally, they lived down in Beersheba. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, Beersheba. And uh, he would come up, uh, he would stay with me when he was going through his uh, rehabilitation. And he told me about, oh, we target practice on Palestinians. This is even without a war. Chinese army peacekeeping forces are in Lebanon. In this video here, um, Chinese forces in Lebanon near an area there where uh, Hezbollah fighters are firing off missiles there. But that is something that is now circulating. Not really sure of the authenticity of this information here, but I do find it interesting in the fact that we have so many Chinese uh, military-aged men that have crossed our southern border there. So I wanted to share that with you. Again, not sure of the authenticity of this as of yet. Uh, it is, in fact, I didn't try clicking on uh, their post them, themselves there, but, uh, and, and maybe there's more, I don't know uh, what all is actually written on here. So uh, I know you can actually, if you, click uh, you're not going to get it that way there but uh, you could translate the individual post I believe uh, just to see it would be best to launch a saturation attack to get rid of these SBs together um, you know and let me just see though we'll real quick try to get an idea maybe uh, maybe there's some you know, the reputation of the UN peacekeeping forces sounds great in fact it is the Chinese Communist Party's overseas Liberation Army Israel's request to leave is exactly the opposite. Being killed is just what you deserve. Wow. Okay, so 
based on the Chinese people responding to this, it is a UN peacekeeping force, and they are going to be there once they bring this war to an end. So uh, that is very interesting. So it seems like that there's more of this story to stand on than what we realize there. So um, anyway, I think I'll, what I'll do is subscribe there so we can kind of, uh, well, we'll deal with that later because I don't want to go into all that as of right now. It's just not the appropriate time. Let's see. Let's move on. Uh, some of the last things here. This is the United States Fox News is reporting that the U.S. has targeted Yemenite forces. Let's listen. There. We are learning from officials this Thursday morning. A U.S. long-range B-2 stealth bombers launched airstrikes early this Thursday morning, targeting underground bunkers used by Yemen's Houthi rebels. It has yet become immediately clear what damage has been done from these strikes. Joining us live this morning uh, to further discuss this breaking news alert is Gerard Felitti, Senior Counsel with the Lawfare Project. Gerard, good morning to you. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you. So for many of this news was very alarming because when we think of the Yemen Houthi rebels, we think of that video I just showed you uh, out there along the Red Sea where they've been uh, continuously attacking uh, those uh, aid ships, also uh, those ships that Let's are used up a shipping bit. in the Red Sea going through the Suez Canal. Uh, this is not to be understood as a simple group that is a, a terrorist group, but this is a very large nationally backed terrorist organization that has taken over the entirety of Yemen practically uh, at the direction and with the help of the run. At a recent uh, interviews and debates with former President Donald Trump, that was pretty much his concern with these groups. He specifically did uh, discuss NATO, you know, on that front and how he was concerned about... Um, At any rate there, we won't play the whole clip for you. I'll try to remember to post this in the description below. Uh, but uh, the U.S. has used B-2, B, uh, B-52 bombers or B-2 bomb, I'm sorry, B-2 stealth bombers there to attack Yemeni Houthi positions there in uh Yemen, and I'm sure it's only going to get make things even worse there. By the way, here we go here. This is not normal. Uh, Rivet de Guerre in France, uh, massive flooding right there going on. When Now, the guy puts in there, this is, uh, let's see, ooh, this afternoon. Oh, he says, this is not normal. Actually flooding in this area when I was just quickly looking for another uh, clip of this uh, is something that does happen. Uh, I, I don't know the full uh, full full impact of all of this, uh, but there was an article back in January that comes out that was stating why does this particular town here have uh, so much flooding? So, uh, but so, it, but yet it's still very very strange, especially th to that magnitude. I mean, nearly way almost waist deep, uh, above the knees anyway. There, thigh deep, I guess we could call that, but. Uh, a lot of damage. I'm not sure exactly what storm brought that much rain upon shore, but uh, it will. I will continue to do uh, the coverages there, and I'll be speaking specifically this next one here about uh, earthquake activity in relation to the series that we're doing on Patreon about Planet X and the different weather events that precede its coming, looking at the ancient documentation uh, along with uh, those expected things, that ch the things that are happening on the Earth. A lot of people call it weather weapons. I'm sure they're, it's not to, to delude the idea of weather weapons, but also to look at the very real possibility that Planet X is is actually contributing to a lot of the issues that we have here happening on the earth. Uh, our first one we did in that series was on storms and it's already posted on patreon.com. Actually, I've loaded several of those, several different videos on Patreon here in the past few, uh, couple of weeks here. So you definitely want to go there, subscribe, become a member, and uh, you can get access to everything that we have there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening and have a blessed day.